The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thanks so much, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada uses the power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the things you're looking for on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search of the week? This is a week. Okay, for this week, for my Fruit Jam mini computer board, I had a specific quest that I went on, and, and you can follow along with me. I really wanted um, this board has a headphone output and also a 48 ohm speaker mono output. Um, and basically what I wanted is a board, sorry, is a chip that can take I2S in and it can, it can use an M clock, although it'd be cool if you didn't need to have an M clock just because it just saves me one, one GPIO, one pin. And it would have two possible outputs, either headphone output and not line level output. A lot of the DACs have line level, but they can't actually drive headphones. I want to be able to drive 16 ohm headphones so you can plug in your Beats by Dre or whatever. Uh, your your cans in and it'll actually be able to give you um, fairly good audio output because it can drive that load and also I want to be able to drive a little mini speaker so the idea with this computer is if you don't have headphones it'll, it'll have a little speaker not like a great one but like you know beep and boop and you can hear from within the speaker but you plug in headphone and then ideally you would even auto detect when the headphones are plugged in and um, switch to headphones so you could have you know good quality output if you have line level speaker headphone and if you don't you have the built-in speaker and i wanted to do this without using a lot of components um i didn't want to get like the DAC and then two amplifiers i wanted it you know it's like let's make something compact doesn't have to be super fancy super expensive just something to to get me going here so um also i wanted to run off of 3.3 volts and like i said i2s input i don't need microphone input i want just uh, output which I, mean, I was looking only for a DAC not a codec um, and I was able to find it. One thing that happened is, you know, I went to DigiKey and one of the things I've noticed about like when you're looking for I2S in particular, sometimes it's, we'll see if I can find it now. It's a little challenging to find a specific thing like this where you're like, well, I wanted to do both, um, headphone and speaker out like there's nothing here that tells you what are the output options it's just like not something that like digikey keeps track of which kind of makes sense because it's a very it's it's kind of a specific thing and so um i spent a little time kind of like noodling around here and i was like well i want like an active DAC, and then i was like oh maybe i could find something that's class D, but it was like, it kind of was, there wasn't really the option. So that's when I kind of decided instead um, to look at the Silicon Vendor website to find the chip and then go back to make sure it's stopped at DigiKey. And that's where I would like, because that, that would be the distribution for it. It's a little bit of a different philosophy. Um, some people do that. They're like, well, I know that I want to use like analog devices for my accelerometer. So I'm just going to find the one that, you know, analog devices makes. And like, you're going to do fine. Um, you may not get the most price feature optimized thing, but you will probably get something fairly good, especially if you're used to that semiconductor company's products and you know what you're getting into. So in this case, because I'd used TI, um, I2S, audio decks and I found them to be very reliable, very good, easy to use, well documented, not like some other series of chips that I've used. Um, I decided to come here and I was going to search on their site instead. So going to the TI audio and I want the audio converter and I want a DAC. So they have, you know, they'll get you to this location. Now, I'll tell you another thing. It's like, it's a little, it's, you know, there's, there's like a huge family of, of chips here and you can search this way, but let's, let's see if I can search. Well, because I've zoomed in, it's like, do you want to, let's view all the products. And I, you know, to be honest, I didn't actually use this. I ended up just noodling around the website until I found the chip, but how would I have done it faster? So looking at all the filters, first off for the control interface, I need it to be I squared C because I don't have hardware and I don't have an extra SPI port. So I was like, okay, I wanna do I squared C for the interface. And this gives me like a lot of options. Second, 
architecture, and this is where I actually found what I was looking for, which is the class D. So class D is what I wanted, because remember, I wanted that speaker output. And remember, not a lot of chips that do I2S DAC have speaker, like an amplified speaker output. It's actually a little unusual. Usually they have line level, and they're like, you go do the rest of it. But I was actually lucky because um, there is a series from TI that kind of does all this, and there's a couple different options. So the first one is there's um, the, the TLV 32, you know, 320 DAC, 3100, 3101, 3120, and 32. And then there's also this Q1 series. And the pricing does, uh, it kind of does affect it. Like the Q1 is the most expensive. I think this is probably automotive um, graded, but the rest are within the same kind of price range. They all have class D, they all do sampling rate within my capabilities I'm expecting. This one uh, does a little bit more, so we'll, we'll check those out. So the TLV um, 3200 stereo deck with mono class D amp and headphone driver and audio processing. And that's kind of lucky because I was like, this sort of was the first thing I looked up and it was like kind of the perfect thing. So it's DAC input and um, it says, it, it seems to me like the bit clock can also be the PLL input, which would be kind of cool because then I, again, I can save the M clock pen. There's an interrupt and stuff. There's I squared C control. There's a full processing block, which can be used to make various filters. Basically you can like DIY an equalizer um, using their internal blocks. So if you want to like do bass boost or you want to um, do uh, uh, high pass or low pass filtering and then, you know, adjust um, the transfer to get better output from like your built-in speaker because the, the output transform is non-linear. So you're like, you want to pre-adjust that. There's a class D speaker driver here and it can do, I think four or eight ohms. And then what's nice is that it has a class AB headphone or line out driver. So you get stereo headphone output and it can do 16 ohm drive. So that's really sweet. There's also a couple other and what I like is they kind of tell you, like, here's the alternatives. So this one is a stereo speaker output. It's a little bit more expensive because it has double the class D. So you see there's two speaker outputs. And I think it's like missing. There's some GPIO or something that it doesn't have that it normally would. I don't remember. Maybe the mic bias or something. Um, but if you were going to... I, I in, I don't need this stereo speaker output, but it does have stereo speaker out. So if this is something you need, I kind of like this. It doesn't give you, the trade-off is because there's a certain amount of dissipation you can have in this package. This one, it has stereo output, but it can only do, let's see if I can find it. 1.3 watt class D 8 ohm speaker. So this one does like one and a half watt 8 ohm and the 3100 can do 2.5 watts into four ohms. So basically it's just like you get a bigger bump. You can actually do like, you know, three watts is fairly loud. Um, so I actually kind of like this more because I was like, well, I'd rather have something that can do you know, higher output into the speaker in case I ever want to, in case I want to go with a four ohm speaker or in case somebody wants to like have it be fairly loud as opposed to a lower wattage into eight ohm because you just have, you have stereo output. So once I picked this one, which was cool, I'm going to digikey and you type it in and they have a valve boards and they also have the chip in stock and they have a lot of them which was kind of nice. There's two versions. Again, this one I think is the Q1. Maybe it's qualified differently or maybe it's a different temperature range. I'm not sure 100% the difference between these two. Maybe it's just on a, oh, it's on a different, um, the tape and reel is bigger. This tape and reel is 2,000, 3,000 pieces and this one is 250. Whichever one, if you're doing cut tape, you might as well just go with um, this. That's a bigger reel, but you just get, a cut off of the smaller one, but they have 13,000 in stock and the price isn't too bad. So as I make this board, like, you know, a dollar 25 or so is I think fair for like what you get, which is the DAC plus 
the headphone driver plus the equalizer plus the speaker driver. And you don't need any other external components. I love the integration of this. So I'm going to spec this part. I'm putting it into my design, the DAC 3100 TLV 320 series. It's a big series of chips. This particular one is um, my choice for my fruit jam board. And that is the great search. Where in the world is that part I need?